Keep on praying. I love you. Oh, praise his name. Could somebody praise his name in here? Could somebody actually praise his name in here? Could we actually give God like real praise in here? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good, amen. Even when we... When we don't know, he's still good. When we're not expecting it, he's still good. From danger seen and unseen, we just don't say that. We actually, we see it, amen? Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. We have uh, Rock Night and Jam will continue on this Wednesday, our prayer service starts at 6 p.m. and classes start at 6.30. Uh, a reminder to all the parents, we do have the mess hall. They come each and every week um, teaching our children STEM, uh, STEM research. Um, this past Wednesday, they taught them how to build bridges and they were saying that's dealing with engineering and just seeing how kids know how to build, amen? Uh, because we are more than uh, people who look like me and you. Uh, we are more than just uh, fashionable and, and drive nice things, whatever. We're smart, amen? And they are showing our children how to be smarter and how to imply that, imply that, excuse me, until society, amen? So please, 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 I know we all have a lot of things going on. However, please bring your children here for good teaching. And you should come too, amen? It's good teaching for all ages here at the church on Wednesday nights, amen. We have a food giveaway on Thursday, April 11th at 8 a.m. Uh, if Again, if you're not busy, if you're retired and you would like to come up and help, please come on through at 8 a.m. for the food giveaway. I drive by here dropping my son off at the daycare and his car is already lined up early in the morning so they need as much help as possible. Amen? Amen. All men of Greater Little Rock are asked to meet Brother Willie Taylor today for about 15 minutes after church in the sanctuary. All men. Amen. Singles ministry, uh, the first activity game night. Clap up for the singles ministry. <laughs> game night <laughs> will be Friday, April 12th at 6 p.m. Great Little Rock members ages 25 and up are welcome. Come out and join them for a night of fun. Save fun, amen. Save fun. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, we saved in Great Little Rock, amen. Save fun, amen. This Youth Saturday, uh, second Saturday is considered Youth Saturday. We will be going to Ronald McDonald House. We will be going to Ronald McDonald House. If you could please bring your children out to Ronald McDonald House on this Saturday at 8 a.m. Uh, we're going to volunteer. We do multiple things, for those who don't know, each second Saturday, we do multiple things with the children. We taught them financial literacy. Uh, we have taught them about how to dress for success. We do a lot, and this second Saturday, what we're doing is a service project. Uh, we try to do different things with them so they can see it's more to it than just them. We need to be outreaching as well, because there are people less fortunate than our children, amen? So please bring your children out. It's only from 8 to 10, and right after we get finished, we'll be right back here for a choir rehearsal for our actual youth Sunday. Amen? Amen. The GLR Summer Bowling League. Uh, 
I didn't have a bad shoulder and hip and knee, I might get out there. <laughs> shoulder, hip, and legs, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. If, if all that wasn't bad, I'd be out there. But anyway, June 2nd at 4 p.m. at Strikers, the Summer Bowling League will start, and it's a lot of fun. So you all come on out to the Summer Bowling League, amen, June 2nd. The Education Celebration is May 19th. If you are graduating from high school, Votech, college, university, please complete the form and return to the office on May the 3rd. Forms are available in the foyer and online, amen. The First West Florida Baptist Districts Association Congress of Christian Education will be May 6th through the 9th at the Baptist Center. Registration sheets are in the foyer and the phase two classroom, amen. Uh, if all people who are involved in our, all personnel, excuse me, who are involved in our nurses ministry, could you please stand? Medical ministry, please stand. Now these ladies are standing because if something happens in the church, there's more than one person that can help you. Amen. We need each other. Amen. So you all see these faces. They are trained and certified. Amen. No shade tree mechanics in here. Amen. If you need some help, these ladies can help you. Amen. Amen. Y'all clap your hands for them. Amen. Pastor just said, oh, it's more to, more to it than some ginger ale, amen? <laughs> amen. Please be in prayer for your one, be intentional for your one, and be in prayer for all those who are on the prayer list, uh, including uh, Brother Robert Lewis, who was just taken to the ER this morning. I just talked to my brother yesterday evening, and he is now in the ER with, with some things going on. Please be in prayer. And as always, keep our pastor and his lovely wife in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Because iron does sharpen iron. Amen. And when we pour out to everybody else, sometimes we get dehydrated in multiple ways. So we need somebody to pour into us. Amen. And the best way we can pour into each other is through prayer. Amen. Because prayer can do what we can't do. Is that right? Amen. So thank you for your obedience in giving. And if you are not saved, there are multiple ways to get a hold of somebody and we can help you through that process to give your life to the Lord because that's mostly important. Amen. And now we call it the Philosophers Ministry. You all clap your hands for these lovely ladies as they come. If this is your first time here at Greater Little Rock, we ask you to please stand. If this is your first time here at Greater Little Rock worshiping with us, we ask you to please stand. No first time guests on today? All right. Well, hey, they just came over here to look pretty, amen? So y'all can see what they got on. Y'all clap your hands for these lovely ladies. And look at your name on your left and on your right, say, hey, family. Now we're going to call up our brother for him for prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, how we love you, how we glorify you, how we thank you for this marvelous day. We thank you, God, because we didn't deserve to see it, but because you loved us so much that you loosed the labyrinthine threads of our lives and allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. And so with that, God, we just come to praise you because you deserve praise. Nobody deserves glory. Nobody deserves honor but you because can't nobody do us like you. 
Nobody can love us like you. Nobody can heal us like you. Nobody can treat us like you. And so we've come with our hands lifted up and our mouths filled with praise to let the world know that we serve a risen Savior and he's in the world today. We know you're alive because you're in our hearts and you're in our minds. And so we thank you right now as a body of believers, God. We come, oh God, to glorify you and let the world know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And so we believe today that you are a giver of all life and from heaven you came down. We thank you right now. Now we pray, oh God, that you have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives right now. Do what only you can do. Heal somebody right now. Deliver a believer. Set some captive free right now. In the name of Jesus, somebody has never trusted you as Lord and Savior. We pray that they don't leave this place without opening their mouths and opening their hearts and asking you to come in and be their Lord for life. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. Get in every song. Get in every prayer. Let your word go forth with power and with conviction right now. God, we praise you. You deserve glory in this house. We open up our mouths and we say, do it, God. We say, do it, God. Like only you can. Heal God like only you can. We thank you right now. God, our world is in a mess, but you can straighten it out. Our country is in chaos, but you can straighten it out. We thank you right now because we know all things work together for good to them that love you and are called according to your purpose. So right now, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that as the man of God stand to declare your word this morning, don't let it fall on deaf ears, but let it accomplish everything that you set it out to do. We thank you right now. We love you right now. We glorify you right now. And then when the invitation is extended in this house, let somebody come from all four corners of this sanctuary to give their heart and their lives to you. We thank you right now for the work that you've done. We thank you right now for what you're going to do. We praise you in advance because we know that you can work it out. We thank you right now. We love you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now clap your hand like you done lost your mind. I mean, clap your hand like you really believe God is a real, is a miracle working God. Clap your hand like you know that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Nobody can pick you up. Nobody can turn you around. Nobody can take your feet and place them. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way, gave you the activities of your limbs? I dare you to tell somebody, nobody but Jesus.
Amen. Let church say amen. amen. Aren't you glad to know that when you get weak, he's like a strength like no other. He's a strength mama can't give you. Daddy can't give you. Pastor can't give you. But I thank God that in my weakness, he is my strength. Amen. Let church say amen. Let church say amen one more time. And don't look at me strange. God is just doing what God is doing. If you would have seen me on December the 30th, you would have thought worse than you see now. But can I tell you, God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders, hallelujah. On New Year's Day, I was walking with a walker. I'm walking with a cane now. I feel all right. Don't look down, look up. Knowing that God can do anything but fail. And do me a favor, do me a favor. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. The doctors know a little bit, but God knows it all. And in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will. Direct your path. May not be the way you want to go. But know that God got you. Y'all sit down. Let me talk to you, John, because they ain't acting right. The book of Isaiah, the 12th chapter. There is a word in there. In that fourth through the sixth verses. Did you give him a text, AJ? Isaiah, the twelfth chapter. Beginning our reading at that fourth verse. Little do you know the preachers have already tap danced on my message. So if I sit down now, you already have gotten your message. <laughs> and it reads beginning at that fourth verse. And in that day, you will say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his deeds among the nation. I was waiting on AJ. He was reading real good to me. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord. For he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, O oh, oh, inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. For a few moments of your prayers, your patience, and your time, I would that you would think and pray with me on the subject and advanced praise. And advanced praise. And can I double tag that? How the church responds to the promises of God. How the church responds to the promises of God. Greater Little Rock, have you ever gotten such good news? about something that was going to happen in your life, that you begin to shout and praise God in advance. Maybe you got on the phone and called your girlfriend or your buddy 
and told them, I don't know when it's going to happen, but since it's coming my way, I don't want to wait to get here. I want to shout now. Have I got a witness in here? When you show your faith in God, you are showing it before things come to pass. I don't know about you, but in 2020, I was lying in my hospital bed. Doctor came in and said, you got cancer, and walked out my room. Me and my wife looked at each other, and we said, well, God got this. 30 minutes later, my oncologist come in, Wesley, and said, you got cancer, but we're going to kill you. Come to my office when you get out of here. My brothers and sisters, it's okay to weep at night, but just know that in the morning, your joy is going to come. Have I got a witness here? I don't know what it is. Maybe you got a, a promotion on your job was coming. Maybe you had signed the papers with the mortgage company and the house was on its way. But whatever it was, it was something that you prayed for a long time ago. I want you to know that whatever you prayed for, just stand still and know that God is working on your behalf. Have I got a witness here? No matter how dark the night, just know that God is in control. No matter how sick you feel, just know he's a doctor in your sick room. He's a doctor that has never lost a patient. Have I got a witness here? My brothers and sisters, this chapter 12 of Isaiah contains two promised praises and one thanksgiving for the redemption and for the salvation that God is going to bring their way. Back then in the Old Testament, it was a promise that was coming. But here we are in the 21st century. We know that that promise has already come. So first, I, I need you to know that no matter what's going on, that God, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Have I got a witness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we're looking around this world right now, and we got a lot of chaos and confusion. We got a lot of turbulence and turmoil. We got a lot of captivity and corruption. We got a lot of destruction and devastation. But can I tell you, if you just wait on the Lord and be of good courage, God will strengthen thine heart. I didn't say might he. I didn't say maybe. I said he will strengthen your heart. Yes, yes, time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth, unmoved can stand. But build your hope on things eternal, and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Now, when I looked at this text, Dr. Wesley, I saw three things that I pray that would please your plight, will elevate your illumination, and know that God is in charge of your life. First of all, the response uh, uh, to the promise is vital to the believer's and to let the unbelievers know that we trust in a God that you can't see, but it's a God that we can feel. Uh, there's number two, my brothers and sisters, a positive promise ought to cause us to have a positive reaction. Then thirdly, knowing that the salvation is that God, is Jesus is with us, it ought to cause us to praise and proclaim his holy name. Can I get a witness in here? This chapter, my brothers and sisters, as I said, uh, gives us two praises and a thanksgiving for what God was about to do in the children of Israel's life. When you get a chance, go home and dust off your Bible and read chapter 11. Chapter 11 gives you the whole proclamation of what chapter 12 is promising us. Now, I don't have time to tell you because we got communion. But Thomas A. Dorsey said it best when he wrote the hymn, There Will Be Peace in the Valley for Me Someday. No, it may not be today, but I can tell you that one of these old days, when we wake up, 
everything will be all right. Can I get a witness here? So firstly, firstly, how we respond to the promise of God is vital. Throughout, as I peruse the pericopes, I see the promises of God happening every day. And in this fourth through this sixth verse, it informs us that our response is vital to the outside world. How can we say we trust in God? And when the storms of life rages, we run and find shelter. How can we say that God loves us and he can do anything but fail and we want to throw in the towel at the first sign of difficulty? My brothers and sisters, if you serve a God that can move mountains, if you serve a God that can part red seas, if you serve a God that can raise up a dead man, don't you know? That our little problem, that our little situation is nothing too hard for the God that we serve. So how we respond is not waiting for the battle to be over, but shout in the midst of your battle. The devil gets upset when you praise God in pain. The devil gets upset when you holler hallelujah and you're hurting. The devil gets upset. When you're still going, and ain't nothing going right for you. But can I tell you, I serve a God that can flip the script. And in a second, anybody in here can say, look where he brought you from. He brought you out of sickness, and you got a little health. No, I don't have my dad, but I'm living wherever God wants me to go. I'll live there. I'll crawl there because you don't know what the Lord has done for me. You weren't there. I got to go secondly, secondly, the receiving of a positive promise ought to calls for a positive reaction. I, I know y'all saying it don't take all that, but you don't know what God promised me. If God has promised you something, don't sit there with your arms folded. Don't sit there with your legs crossed. You need to let the world know that it is no secret. What God can do, what he's done for others, he's going to do just for you. I thank God today. When my children gathered, when I got home, they had a sad look on their face. I said, why are you looking sad? I said, it could have been COVID. But God let it be cancer. And God got a cure for cancer. God can handle cancer. So I started praising God around my grandchildren. They looked at me cross-eyed. I said, God has brought me, baby, from a mighty long way. And he didn't bring me this far just to leave me. He's going to walk with me. Verse 5, it says, sing unto the Lord. That's a positive reaction. Why am I being positive, Rev? Well, let me tell you, he woke you up this morning. Somebody else didn't wake up. You woke up with a roof over your head. Somebody woke up up under the bridge. Can I tell you, you had clothes to put on. And it ain't the ones you had on yesterday. Better yet, some of y'all ain't worn since last year. God is good. And his mercy endures forever. So yeah, I'm going to come into his presence with thanksgiving. I'm going to come into his courts 
with praise. Cause God has been good. So yeah, and he's still good. And he's going to be good. He did something for me yesterday. He's doing it today. And in advance, I'm appraising for what he's going to do later on today. Ain't God good? Don't his mercy endure forever. Frankly, Reverend Thomas, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul shouts, hallelujah. I praise God, not just for saving me, but for healing me. Not just for healing me, but for delivering me. Not just for delivering me, because can I tell you, one day I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply, I was staying within. I was seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he had my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Can you shout now say, now say, am I? I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He did it. Y'all ain't playing fair. Y'all ain't playing fair. Pitted my earth grown. Long as I live, and trouble rise. I'm going to get in a hurry. They say hasten, but I'm going to get in a hurry to his throne. Why, kid? Because I've been there before. And he delivered before. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. Can I get a witness here? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Then thirdly, I, 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 I told you it's vital how the church responds to the promises of God. I did tell you that a positive promise ought to call for a positive reaction. Don't sit there sad. Don't sit there like you're sucking on a lemon. Make lemonade at least. Add a little sugar to it. What's the sugar, Rev? I'm glad you asked. It's the promises of God. If you're a child, God, a child, a child of God, this book is full of promises just for you. And if you don't just want to read the book, read me. Read me. Look where God has brought me from. Look where God is taking me to. He's brought me through a lot, and he's going to take me to a lot. And I thank God for that. Then finally, because we got to take communion. Finally, knowing that Jesus is with us, it all calls for us to praise and proclaim the goodness of God. Knowing, as the Holman Christian Standard Bible says, for the Holy One of Israel is among us in his greatness. So we should cry out and sing citizens of Zion. All of us who are in here today are citizens of Zion. And to know that Emmanuel, Christ is with us today. That ought to cause for us to celebrate through singing and proclamation that God is on the inside, working his way to the outside. Greater Little Rock, it is an honor and a privilege to be in God's presence. So let us not take it lightly or take it for granted that God is with us. So let us use it as an advantage for our good. Let us come before his presence with praise. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, knowing that he is good. And 
His mercy endureth forever. And knowing uh, that he is with us, make us uh, want to understand uh, more about the Trinity. When I look up, uh, I see God uh, in his creation. When I read the word, uh, I see him uh, in the word uh, being fleshed. When I read, when I feel him, uh, I feel uh, the Holy Ghost moving uh, on the altar of my soul. Uh, that lets me know uh, that I serve a God uh, that can do anything uh, but fail. Uh, yes, uh, Israel uh, was praising him uh, for the Messiah coming. Uh, Yes, uh, he died uh, and laid in a borrowed tomb uh, and got up uh, the third day morning. Uh, that's what the New Testament tells us. But I got one more promise, uh, and I'm going to my seat. Uh, there is uh, a new paradigm. Uh, we don't have to praise him because uh, he's on his way. Uh, we don't have to praise him uh, because he's going to die. Uh, but I praise him because uh, one of these old days, uh, I don't know when uh, and I don't know where, but he's coming back. Yes, he is. I heard him uh, say, I go away. Uh, to prepare a place, uh, but I'm going to come again uh, and receive you uh, unto myself. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that's waiting on the Lord uh, to return, uh, not as a servant, uh, but as King of kings uh, and Lord of lords? Uh, I'm glad uh, that I can praise him, uh, that in spite of it all, uh, I know uh, I do know, uh, I know uh, that God will uh, make a way, uh, make a way uh, out of no way. Uh, it may not happen uh, when I want it, uh, but in God's uh, own time, uh, my change, uh, my healing, uh, my blessing, uh, my deliverance uh, is on its way, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. somebody there may be one person there may be one person who will admit that you need the Lord on your side can I ask you to raise your hand if you've ever been sick before can I ask you to raise your hand if you've ever been sick in the hospital, maybe? Maybe in the hospital, maybe you've, you've been sick, right? Yeah. Have you ever had the doctors to come in and just say stuff you didn't want to hear them say? <laughs> I'm, t I'm not talking about, you know, no, no, no shade, no, no shade. I'm not talking about saltine crackers sick and, and ginger ale sick. I'm talking about you were in the hospital. And, and tests had to be run on your body. Maybe they, maybe they slid you into a machine. You just laid there and you, they just slid you into the machine. I'm, I'm talking about, have you ever had some kind of ailment where you just knew that couldn't nobody fix it? So if you can say yes to those questions, my next question is, what are you waiting on to praise God?
Are you waiting on the preacher to come to tell you when to stand up? Are you waiting on the preacher? That's a that's amen, yeah. Yes, thank you. Are you waiting on the preacher to tell you when to raise a hand or when to when to stand up or when to are you waiting? The preacher, what I got from the sermon is the preacher said, God used the preacher to tell me God has already done enough for me to keep my hand raised, for me to give him praise, for me to tell somebody. Did you read the scripture, Isaiah 12, 4 through? He's done it. Hasn't, he, hasn't God done enough for you to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord? I wouldn't take a chance that you would get another opportunity to give your life to the Lord. I would give, if I were you, and if I knew I did not have a church, I would give my life to the Lord today. Thank you, Lord. Who comes to get a, to get a church home today? Who comes today? It's, today should be your day. Anybody coming today? to give their life to the Lord. It's not a temporary thing. It's from now until the day you close your eyes for good. Old folks say, I will Might not be able to run, but I'm going to stay on the battlefield. Can't run like I used to. But I'm going to stay on, on the battlefield. Yes, sir. I, I'm going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, boy.
just do the church thing. But God, remind us again to give you the praise in advance of the next blessing. God, I thank you for what you're going to do in my life. I thank you for what you're going to do in the life of those under the sound of my voice. I bless you, God, for those who came around the altar. Thank you for faith coming to give her life to God, to Christ, God to you through Christ, God. And I thank you, God. Hold this family, God. Glenda, hold this family. Uh, God, the Goo family, God. Hold this family together. Every family in the building and on YouTube. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise in advance for what you are going to do. Let every heart say amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Come on, brothers as we prepare to lead in this communion service, this Lord's Supper service. Has everybody been served? If you have not been served, please hold your hand up to the left of them until you will be served. You don't mind that. Yeah, on both sides. Mr. Dean, if you're on both sides. Okay. Anybody in the choir need to be served? He's on the way to the back. Please just hold your hand up so that they will come around and serve. As I look around the room, I see so many prayer requests. see so many prayer requests. I see so many prayer requests as I look around this room. Everybody been served now? Before we move any further, but as I look around this room, I see so many prayer requests, so let me say this to you. You give up, you're only doing what everybody can do. Can I say it again? If you give up, you're only doing what everybody else can do. Everybody can give up. I wish I had everybody's attention. Everybody can give up and everybody can give in. I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Everybody can give up and everybody can give in. But everybody can't give it over to the Lord. Had a quick honeydew on the way to church. Went to the store and the cashier I, after I invited her to church. Oh no, I don't. ever want to go. I just thought she said she can go today. If you ever want to want to go and you don't have a church home, you're more than welcome to go to the church where I go worship at. I have to say it like that because when they find out I'm the pastor, they always get, you know, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that switch turns on quickly. So I learned a long time ago, I never, my name isn't called me Lonnie, now, Davis now. Wesley the third. Thank you. 
But if you ever want to go to church, you're welcome to go where I go. I worship at Red Little Rock. He said, oh, I don't want to go to no church. I don't want to go to no church. I said, God bless you. Philippians 2, 10 and 11. I'm just going to paraphrase it. The Apostle Paul said, at the name of Jesus. You don't have to praise him when the preacher tells you to. praise him when the Lord uses the preacher to bring some things back to your remembrance through the Holy Spirit. You don't have to raise one hand. You don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to testify. You don't have to evangelize your children. You don't have to do anything. Listen, you can live your best life as long as you remember this one thing. At the name of Jesus. Every name shall bow. And there's an inference in the text. Every tongue at the name of Jesus. That's the inference. Shall confess that Jesus. The Christ. Yes, sir. You can keep posting on Facebook all you want to. You can you can selfie Facebook to death. You can put nasty words and nasty posts. And you, can, you, can, you can put the most ungodly, the most unchurched stuff you want to on your page. That's your page. But don't forget. One of these old days. When strokes are over, when, when heart attacks are done, when you don't have to take any more high blood pressure, you don't have to take any more medicine, one of these days, we'll finish communion in a second, but I got to say it, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to help you out. It's easier to do it now. I think it was 1984. I believe it was the boy born in the red clay hills of Alabama. He moved out to California. He was in the Lagan family. His first name was Joe. I think it was he and his friends said, this is just a rehearsal. Am I right? Is that the one who said? He said, when we get to heaven, we're going to really sing. Will you practice down here? Praising the name of Jesus. Will you practice now? That's what the preacher said. Will you practice now? Don't wait for that day to bow down to him. Because everybody is not going to heaven. Those who are not his children, he will say, yeah, you're praying, but I don't know you. Uh, uh. Last question. Will you start today giving him the praise and the honor and all the glory? Will you start today? I'm going to ask you. You've got a hole in front of your pew. Put that communion cup in the hole. Let me lead you one more time. Just raise your hand if you don't mind. Close your eyes if you so feel led. Praise God in advance. We are about to remember how God gave his son. And how his son gave his life. Will you lift up Lord, a holy hand in the sanctuary? All is not lost. 
You don't have to walk around with a sad countenance. I know you're going through something. But baby, all of us are going through something. I'm going through something. My wife is going through something. Our children are going through something. All of us are going through something. But will you, can you just, can I just lead you into worshiping God? In advance. Knowing he's already fixed it for you. synoptic gospels are indeed what they say they are and how they are in unison and in, in harmony they connect the fact that Jesus told, do, told Judas go ahead and do what you've got to do whatever you do he said do it now get it done go ahead and do it so it left only the 11 there the 11 believers hallelujah he said to them, what's going to happen to me, I'm going to give my body. Let us eat now, remembering how his body was broken just for us.